Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Bo from Zizzo Bikes, and we're getting to know Michelle Morrow, and we've talked a little bit about her for some uh, news she made recently. But first of all, thank you for joining us. Of course. She is down in uh, Los Angeles, California. She's going to tell the story, but she probably didn't plan on being on the front page of the LA Times. <laughs> but uh, she has uh, done a great job promoting cycling for everybody and uh, and really getting out there amongst the, her community to show uh, what bikes, how they can make a difference in people's lives. And uh, we're all about that here at Zizzo. We want the world to ride bikes and uh, we're all bike enthusiasts ourselves. Be before we even thought about talking to you or you getting on the LA Times, I personally was following you because I do all the social media on the TikTok. And that's how I found you probably a year, maybe a year ago. It was, I remember the very first video I saw was you were carting around a plant Yes. <laughs> so. yeah, I, was, I was carrying a peach tree and that's actually the video that like blew up and folks just like love that video and we're asking so many questions even about the bike. Right. right. I was like, so, so there, so there you go. I, I kind of guess, I guess I jumped in when it kind of all got going for you, but <laughs> let's just kind of take it back. Did you grow up in LA since yeah. as a kid? Yeah, so I was born and raised in LA, and I have lived in the same neighborhood my whole life, except, of course, when I went off to college. But yeah, LA, LA, born and raised. <laughs> okay, what any specific part? I know LA is pretty spread out. Yeah, I'm in the South Central area, so south of LA. Um, you know, and it's it's a place that's not known for like bike lanes, so I think that's another reason why folks were so interested in the content that I was making just because pe people don't usually think of our neighborhood as a cycling neighborhood. Did you get into biking in it as a, just a kid with a BMX bike or, or a girly bike or what, what was your first bike? <laughs> yeah so my bike was a girly bike and it was actually handed down from my siblings. Um, you know I started off with the training wheels. I didn't start off like other folks who just start off you know just without the training wheels. And then, you know, I did that as a kid. Then I grew up, I sort of left cycling. I didn't really pick up a bike up until I went back to, uh, went to school. So I went to UC Santa Barbara and I did not have a driver's license. So my parents bought me a bike and um, I was using that bicycle as my main form of transportation, you know, throughout my college years. And UCSB has a very bike friendly, you know, bike paths, you see bike lanes all over the campus and East La Vista, which is the neighborhood right next to UCSB is also super bike friendly. So that's, I would say that's mainly where my love of, you know, bike riding came from, and where I really became interested in, in cycling. So it's by necessity, really. It's just like, hey, I, I want to get around. I have no car, yeah. <laughs> I have no driver's license or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do what you got to do. And uh, what was the bike that you were primarily using when you were in, in college? So I had two bikes. My parents had bought me a beach cruiser. And I don't remember the brand. I, I want to say it was a Huffy, but I did not. I don't really like beach cruisers. I don't think they're the best when it comes to having to use it to to lug around groceries or anything of that sort. Sure. So the second bike I got and the main one I used was a giant um, bicycle and it was a mountain bike. So it wasn't like a city bike or anything. It was a mountain bike that I was using around uh, UCSB. And that's the main one that I use. And that one was handed down by my brother. So, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah well, they're a... definitely heavy duty made to handle yeah. carrying stuff around. Definitely. So, well, you must have, uh, did you get to, uh, you know, along the beach and all the trail, all the, all the paths, the beautiful paths and stuff like that? Definitely. I would take that thing everywhere. I, people would, my friends would make fun of me sometimes. They'd be like, oh my gosh, are you going on your bike? Why, why don't you just catch the bus or, you know, ask for a ride from someone? I'm like, no, I, I love using the bike. I love getting fresh air and, you know, being able to see people walking around. If you guys haven't seen her bike, she has a custom painted. So if you see it and you're like, 
what color is that? Where I don't see that offered on the Zizzo website. <laughs> she custom painted her bike. But when did you uh, find that bike? How did you get it? Yeah. So the Zizzo bike, I got it off of the website, of course, and I got it refurbished. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I got it off the site and then I just decided to spray paint it to, you know, customize it to my liking. But yeah, I got it off your site. That's and I so did a awesome. lot of research on like different websites, forums, Reddit, and then I joined your Facebook group. So I honestly did a lot of digging, you know, before buying the bike. But uh, it's my favorite. I love it. And I yeah. use it almost every day. One of the awesome parts of your videos is you create some, some storyline and then you narrate over the top of that. So talk a little bit about getting into TikTok and how that's all evolved. Yeah, of course. Um, the TikToks didn't really start until like very late 2019 early 2020 and a lot of the bike content and even the reason I'm going to kind of backtrack a little even the reason why I got a folding bike in the first place is because I visited Japan and I saw a lot of folding bikes over there and I was just so interested and I'm like oh I love all these folding bikes like I wonder if I can find one here in the U.S. something that I like and sure enough you know I found Sizzo got the bike and then I started making videos on the CISO and the narration didn't really come until a little later and it was just you know I have a bit of social anxiety so it just I, I just sort of tested it out not and surprisingly enough people just really enjoyed the you know narration and having like my voice speaking over videos Monday December 4th there is a ciclavia going on here in South Central here is the route I wanted to show you all what you can see and do our first stop is Cafe Calle on 33rd Street on Central it's not directly along the way but it is a worthy pit stop if you need some coffee or any pastries and just like you mentioned one of the reasons why I do the narration is because of that windy noise um, you can't really do it while you're bike riding. Also, especially when I was just beginning, I was I was a bit out of shape, so I was breathing really heavy. And you can uh -huh. you can kind of go back to those videos and listen to my breathing. So that's another reason why why I did the narration. And yeah, and I started focusing on bike riding, not only on like the bike and the specs of the bike, but also what you can do on your bike in the neighborhood and why a folding bike is very useful to have and honestly it's been very useful because a lot of places do allow me to go inside and you know eat with my bicycle right underneath me or you know anything of that sort but yeah that's pretty much how my tiktok video started i just started doing daily stuff and started recording it um so on in my bio you'll see it's in spanish it says momentos cotidianos it sounds way different in english it means everyday moments so it's everyday moments that i you know experience and then i'm taking people along with me to to take a look you know but yeah yeah that's basically how it started well i, I mean uh, you know a lot of people and then they t talk about in this world of social media is like organic and things happening for people um they weren't planning on like blowing up and all that stuff they're just like hey i'm just this in fact sometimes as a creator, you might think, gosh, this is, my life's pretty boring. Why does anybody want to follow this? <laughs> yeah, yes. But we have to, uh, we have to like go ahead and just do it for if you enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, then, then don't do it. it. It's really, it's pretty simple. So you mm -hmm. clearly enjoy making videos. And I think um, showing your community has been a, uh, is, is, is a big deal because a lot of people don't um, know what that life is like or that yeah. area looks like yeah. um, you know maybe you're you're for for me I live in uh, Northern California when I go through LA but I never but there's never a time I'm coming and stopping and go to dinner South Central or any of those places I just have no reason to so yeah. to see yeah. the lifestyle of what what is going on there and uh, how people use bikes I think is you shine a light on on that as well as uh, culinary uh, yeah. art <laughs> and so like uh, bike rides as far as like if there's a group bike ride have you mm -hmm. noticed um, because of your TikToks that there's uh, you've there's been any kind of noticeable change in 
in your area of, of bike riding and how it's perceived or anything? I would say a lot of people have commented in terms of how they perceive bike riding. A lot of people tell me, oh, because of your TikToks, I now take uh, cyclists into account, more into account when I'm driving, because I do see them. And, you know, sometimes drivers would get frustrated because cyclists are maybe not going at a higher speed as they would want to. So a lot of people have commented that they take uh, that into account much more often in terms of like bike lanes and that sort of accessibility. I would say there's already like groups that are doing a lot of that. And some of the bike group videos that I've done, the right the group rides that I've like filmed with, um, they're the groups that have been advocating and, you know, doing making those big changes in terms of bike lanes and the infrastructure updates. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, it's mainly just people's viewpoints in terms of cycling. A lot of people, again, tend to think of cycling in in, in a non-recreational form, you know, and I try to shine a light on all types of uses for cycling, whether it's for fun, if it's for, you know, running errands, um, or like you mentioned, I, I have talked about the cyclists that people don't usually think about like again people usually don't think of this neighborhood as having a lot of cyclists but there's a lot of people riding bikes here and I noticed it even more when I started like filming I'm like oh wow there's actually a lot of people on bikes <laughs> I think the word cyclist you know and I've talked with other friends about this you know, oh, I'm not a cyclist. Well, a cyclist isn't always somebody that's wearing super tight spandex and a $10,000 carbon racing bike. We're yeah. all cyclists. If you ride a bike, you're a cyclist. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not that kind of cyclist. Okay, well, whatever. You ride a bike. The The area that you uh, primarily do your riding in um, is these are close to home and you're just doing your daily, what you yeah. call daily things. And and bringing your bike into a restaurant and ordering something. Um, boy, that's a huge deal about for folding bikes because I know I get scared anytime my bike is sitting outside like a local Starbucks mm -hmm. and I'm just like pull up and I'm like, uh, should I take it in? And oh, I mm -hmm. can't take it in. Should I? And then I'm sitting there ordering my drink and I'm looking back and forth yeah. and it only takes 10 seconds for somebody to hop on yes. and go. So the folding bike thing for you you're constantly taking in. Have you ever had anybody like, hey, what are you doing bringing that in here? No, everyone's been super nice about it. Even when I went to the movie theater, there was just like, yeah, you can fold it up and leave it behind our counter. Totally fine. Wow. Um, so people I... have been really, you know, ni nice about it. And um, they've gotten more used to it. I have seen a, a good amount of folding bikes around now. So in Europe, folding bikes are normal. Yes. Yeah. And, and as you saw in, in Japan, and in Asia, it's it's pretty normal too. It's yeah. it's here. It's hard to get like. Um, I think it's younger people because they're so enamored with like, oh, it's a mountain bike. Well, do you go mountain biking? No. <laughs> and so they they don't really. Sometimes, especially kids. I mean, yeah. I was one too. You know, you got to get the cool bike or whatever's in style. Uh, yeah. Not really thinking as much about like uh, like how this is going to help me. And as you get older, you kind of might find yeah. that out. So is there something that uh, when you talk to people of your own age group um, about these bikes, like, you know, they like, Hey, what is that? What, what do you, I mean, they know you now have it because, yeah. but every, but have you ever had like incidents where, you know, they've never heard of a folding bike and you sit there and give them the little demonstration? Yeah, most definitely. I've had a lot of people every time I'm walking by, even when they don't, ask me directly I overhear them saying oh my gosh look at that bike it folds oh wow <laughs> or like even in Spanish they're like mira like that bike folds you know and I'm like oh yeah it folds yeah and sometimes they ask me for the information like what type of bike is it because again I painted it so it doesn't have the bike logo on it but I let them know what I have but yeah people have been asking and also for some reason people think that my bike is electric and I'm like, oh no, it's not electric. And it's also because I go, sometimes I go pretty fast on mm -hmm. it and people have this idea that, oh, it's a folding bike. You can't go fast 
when you're riding a folding bike, but no, you can. And it's not electric. I'm, you know, I'm pedaling, I'm manually pedaling the bike. And yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Because like, uh, <laughs> when I started here a little over a year and a half ago, uh, that was kind of my concept. I was just like thinking when I see these bikes in the 20 inch wheels, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be able to get anything like my road bike. So we actually have done some tests and we took uh, these power meter pedals that basically tell you how, how many, how much effort you're putting into pedaling and compared it with my road bike. And the difference was really minimal. <laughs> and this is like a, you know, a three, $4,000 carbon road bike. Yeah. A lot of times the difference is in my opinion is when you're sitting straight up, you got the full force of the wind yeah. versus on a road bike, you're kind of crouched down and maybe a little more aero, yeah. but you know, Hey, you're just riding around city and having fun and yeah. you're not trying to go fast. But, but like you said, people don't realize uh, that yeah. these things can go. And have you ever taken them uh, off road or any dirt trails? Uh, not dirt trails, but some of the streets in LA, you would say there is, it's like off roading. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> It handles some of the streets really well. I'm like, wow, I'm honestly amazed sometimes. I'm like, okay, I thought I was not going to be able to make it past the street, but I did. <laughs> a little rough on the, yeah, yeah. yeah, they need to get yeah. out there and put some patching on the asphalt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you, made, have you made any modifications to, other than the paint, have you decided to uh, mess around with the modifications on you? On, because you got the Liberté, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I actually haven't done any other modifications. I mean, sometimes, you know, on the Facebook group, I take a look at like what people have done. And that's another thing. Like, I'm not the most savvy when it comes to like bike gear or any anything of that sort. So I'm like, I don't know what the best thing is for this. Like, even when you mentioned, um, you know, when we're standing, when we're riding a bike and we're sitting up that wind, I usually put my seat much higher than it should be just because I can go much faster if my seat is a little higher because it feels more comfortable for sure. me. Sure, sure. But, but in terms of like modifications, no, it's just been like the paint and, you know, any sort of racks that I get that I've changed. But yeah, I haven't done, I haven't done much. The, the, what it already comes with has worked just fine for me. Awesome. <laughs> Have you had any, um, since you first got it, any major maintenance issues you had to do? No, I haven't. And I am telling you, some of the streets in LA are really, they're crazy. Um, but no, I haven't had any issues. And I've only, throughout the whole time that I've been using it, I've only had a tire uh, pop once. And again, some of the streets are full of glass and yeah. nails. And, you know, that's amazing. In my past experience with bikes, I think that's pretty amazing. Just once having to go into the shop to get the inner tube changed. I'm like, that's not, that's very little for how long I've been riding this bike. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and do you keep, I'm just curious, do you have any um, app or anything you keep track of your miles or anything? Just curious. I don't, I don't, but I definitely should. I usually just, you know, when people, because some, some people do ask me on TikTok, like, Oh, how long was this ride? I usually just map my map, map it on Google maps. I'm like, Oh, okay. So the ride was about this long. Sure. <laughs> Sure. But I know sometimes <laughs> I can change, but I'll probably start using like an app to track all of that info. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a bunch of free ones out there. There's some paid, yeah. but most of them are free. <laughs> now, how did it come to be that you got into the LA Times? What? How did that whole process work? Yeah. yeah. So I actually um, already, I guess I was already mutuals with one of the writers and I wasn't aware that they were a writer for LA Times. And I got a message from them, you know, out of the blue one day. And they were like, oh, my gosh, I've seen your TikTok videos about cycling in, you know, South Central. Like, I would love to interview you for the L.A. Times. I'm working on this piece about, you know, cycling in L.A. And then, um, yeah, we set up an interview. And this was back in August. I set up that interview time, interviewed, did the first interview and then met up a second time later on that month and then took photos and all of that stuff but yeah it just came to be that I I wasn't even aware that I was mutuals with this person that was an LA Times writer but yeah I they she was watching yeah 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. She's like, I'm going to keep an eye on this one. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that cool. was so very surprising for me. I was not expecting to, to be in the LA Times at all. Well, those were nice pictures too. I mean, that one of you like kind of over the bike and the pictures yeah. coming from under underside. <laughs> I was all, wow, that's pretty stylish. This person was like, you know, <laughs> instead of, I mean, they could have just took a picture of you standing yeah. next to your Zizzo looking at the camera. Yeah. They're like, hey, let's get some, let's get a little style into these pictures. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, what kind of, uh, did you see a bump in your uh, numbers or anything like that? You're subscribed on either Instagram or TikTok? Yeah, I, I would say that after the article came out, I definitely saw a lot of people um, just following me. And it's um, people that weren't necessarily from like L.A. that I noticed were following me. It was people from like other states. And I, it was just interesting to see that like influx of people come in and start following me and just getting comments like, oh, hey, from Chicago, love your content oh wow hi <laughs> yeah <laughs> is, is it become uh because so if you don't mind me asking uh what do you do for a living yeah yeah so i'm actually an event manager and i work remote so a lot of my work is virtual <laughs> i got a friend that's um made it a well not a best buddy or nothing but a guy i know that maybe about seven years ago started this whole cycling thing he's, and he blew up to like you know hundred thousand subscribers mm -hmm. he's doing it's flown all over the world to do cycling things awesome. and and it's become as a, a, a business for him he had to just like literally mm -hmm. stop his job um, <laughs> and is that something that you feel like hey you know if it gets to that point or are you just like i'm cool with what i'm doing right now and uh, i'm not even going to worry about thinking about monetizing and all that stuff yeah, I mean, for the time being, you know, I, I really love doing this as a hobby. And I think it just it, it's a little different once you start, you know, monetizing it and doing it as your main, you know, job. But I mean, I'm open to it, but I sure. currently love what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the key is like, if you love what you're doing, then if the other stuff comes, that's kind of gravy. Um, so you pretty, do you feel like uh, you're spending a lot more time like answering DMs and responding yeah. to comments and, and uh, how do you, uh, get, put aside that time and still be able to have your normal social life and family life and, and, and all that? Yeah. So yeah, I, I usually do dedicate time, you know, after work, after I get off and I do work a lot of like international events. So some of my hours are pretty hectic and they're like at off times. So I usually respond to question like that. Like I do get, and again, sometimes I do get questions in terms of bike gear, but I'm not the most like, again, bike gear. Uh, I'm not knowledgeable much on like that end of things, but yeah, I have noticed a lot of people start to like message me and comment. Uh-huh. The notoriety of people on, on TikTok and Instagram and stuff, I, you know, you see it all the time where somebody just blows up and it's kind of like overwhelming. So it seems like you kind of got it and you maybe are a nice, it's been a nice gradual build. Yeah, definitely. It hasn't been uh, to the point where it's overwhelming. Where I'm like, okay, I can't do this. I mean, there have been times where it's like, there's a lot of comments coming in at one point. I'll just hold to respond to those until a later time when they stop coming in at a high speed. But no, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty gradual. Because you do promote cycling in a way that's uh, an advocate for cycling, you know, and, and it's not just like, hey, look at me, go to Taco Bell and get some food. <laughs> it's yeah. There's a lot of, uh, there's some thought into, there's your fun stuff. There's a, hey, I got look at my outfit. I got this new little outfit down at the yeah. store. And then there's the, you know, little more serious side of your content. Um, is that a kind of like off the cuff mm -hmm. effort? You like are riding your bike and then all of a sudden you're like, mm -hmm. you know, I really need to talk about this situation. Or is this things you kind of like have scripted a little bit, like you want to lay out over time things you want to. Or is it just kind of pop to your head? How do you come up with these ideas? Yeah, usually it's all stuff I've experienced. So sometimes, you know, in a lot of my videos, I talk about like the cycling infrastructure and even pedestrian infrastructure. So it's things I 
grow, grew up experiencing here in LA and things that, okay, now I have a platform and, you know, I can show it while I'm riding my bike and I can also use it to inform people of what's going on. Um, so I would say it's half and half. Um, I plan it out or again, it's something that I experience on, on a daily basis. So why not mention it if I, especially if I have it on video. Um, and again, it comes, it, it it's all in terms of like pedestrian uh, infrastructure and cycling infrastructure and, you know, issues that come along with that here in LA, because I would say we're not the most pedestrian and bike friendly city. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah it's a little, it's a little nerve wracking to ride down like San, San Francisco is actually not too bad in sections. There's like these green lanes and it's, you know, you're separated by, you know, a little bit of spot, a little <laughs> five, six feet from yeah. cars that are moving pretty fast and crazy cabs doesn't yeah. stop them from coming into the green lane, but you feel like, Hey, this is my space kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so we sometimes will do some video and I'll go over there and I'm always scared because I don't even like driving in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't like driving in LA, any big city really. <laughs> so um, have you had any uh, incidents where you're like, you caught stuff on camera uh, while riding? There was one incident where, unfortunately, I didn't catch it on camera. So I have a camera that's pretty small, and it goes on my chest it, with a magnet, and it overheats. There was this one time where I almost did get hit, and the only thing I caught was the shouting of my husband riding behind, behind me, shouting to move out of the way because the car was right behind me on the bike lane, just trying to cut in. Uh. Um, but... In terms of actually catching anything on camera, nothing. I haven't caught any sort of accident. No. Are you attached to any kind of group that meets your uh, in the same kind of mindset? I'm not attached to any group, but I do support organizations that do a lot of the work. Again, there's a specific organization that does a lot of work here in, in my neighborhood and who has advocated. And they're actually one of the reasons why they've built so many of the bike lanes here. And yeah, I mean, again, I'm not affiliated with them, but I, I do support them and they're called People for Mobility Justice. So they do a lot of work in terms of, you know, helping um, cities and neighborhoods get bike lanes and just creating a more pedestrian and bike friendly neighborhood. Right, yeah. right. And, and you see, because I'm not familiar with that group, but are you, have you seen in your time since you graduated from college, you seen any movement on any of that? I mean, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I the street that I usually uh, bike on, that street never had a bike lane before. And um, I'm not sure if they were the ones in charge of that bike lane, but I'm pretty sure they might have been the part of the people who advocated for it. They actually have protected biker. So they're protected. They're the plastic bollards, but plastic bollards are a little better than having nothing at all. So, sure. um, yeah. So that's that's what I've noticed. I've noticed a lot of bike lanes start to pop up. And um, I did actually attend one of their group rides um, a few months ago. And they're actually, uh, you know, advocating and in the process of starting to to build a bike lane in another main like street nearby. So pretty oh, exciting. Have you ever thought about doing, uh, I mean, not that it rains much in Southern California and you always have pretty good weather. Have you thought about doing the indoor trainer thing? I actually do have one. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. And Great. I use it in my backyard. So I have a, the sizzle uh, indoor trainer. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> so I, I didn't even know the that. Backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. We were just, we just did a whole thing on Instagram about some of the cool apps that they have and the programs they have for cycling virtually. Yeah. And Zwift and some of these other ones where you can be like riding along and looking at the whatever course that you're on and there's people from around the world in real time well, zooming awesome. in and out by you and you can just keep track of all your stats. And it's just because uh -huh. sometimes that indoor trainer stuff can get a little boring sitting there and pedaling away and you're not doing anything. Yeah. But, but when yeah. you got, uh, we, cause we have those sensors. Now we have those little speed cadence sensors that you can stick on your Zizzo wheel and it registers on these programs and tells you how fast you're going. And then it imports that into your little character that you make. Mm -hmm. And it, you pick a course. Some places are actual real places in the world. And yeah. then some places are just uh, fake virtual worlds. 
Do you take any uh, rides with your pooch? Don't because you got a little pup, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't usually take him out around around my neighborhood, mainly because there's always like stray dogs that may like you know at attack him while I have him on my bike. Um, but I do want to take him out and I want to buy one of those backpacks where I can take him on my back because I think that's just much safer right? Than jump off or anything. But I definitely want to do that. So you'll probably see a video coming up soon of me riding yeah. my dog. Yeah, because <laughs> What kind of dog do you have? It's a little one, right? I don't even know. Yeah, it's a small dog. I don't know what type of dog he is. He's like mixed with a bunch of things. I have no <laughs> idea what he is. And we rescued him. We've he was a stray dog they we found them as a puppy out on the streets and saved him and yeah wow. it, but i don't know what type of dog he is <laughs> <laughs> well they yeah they love they love being out like uh everybody i i know i got a guy um right now that uh i became friends with a couple of years ago he's pretty big on youtube he travels the world with his dog in a in a, in a uh, basket in the back of his big old mountain bike and his name is uh, John. He's from Canada. And he has a dog named Mira La Pera. Yes, and, I know uh, exactly who you're talking about. You know about. John? Yes. <laughs> I think he went somewhere in like Latin America recently. Or, yes. Or, yeah. He's in Mexico I, right now. Yes. I love I love his videos. Oh, she's yes. so happy. That's and she's happy. so well trained just staying in the back of the bike. I'm just like, how? Like, I wish my, I, I wish I could like train my dog how to do that <laughs> <laughs> well that's cool that you, you know Mira. a lot of people they have no idea but just the just the story of a dog and a guy traveling the world on a bike i mean how can you yeah. not like that yeah exactly so, well i don't want to keep you too much longer but um what what would you like to tell people about your area where you live is what would you say about that area that maybe yeah. somebody that's never really been there yeah of course i would let people know why well, let people know that you know, this neighborhood has a lot of rich history. Uh, it is where, you know, jazz in L.A. was huge. And you could see, still see remnants of that. If you come down, especially to Central Avenue, you'll see a lot of, you know, the influences of jazz. And there's a lot of beautiful restaurants and, you know, places to visit. Um, so I, I would tell people to, like, not think of my neighborhood as what they see on television it's we're more than just that you know it's a very resilient place with amazing folks amazing culture and food um but yeah i i would say folks to you know visit south central if they can again especially central avenue a lot of historical places there and there's usually a jazz festival so if you like jazz you know you can always go to that jazz festival but I, yeah. I can imagine the food is, you know, we have a lot of like street food and all types, not just tacos. So we have, we have a lot of different things. <laughs> right. So thank you very much for your time, Michelle. We really appreciate you sharing your story with us. And uh, we look forward to more TikTok stuff and, and Instagram and where can they find you? Yeah. So my uh, handle is Michelada, M-I-C-H-E-1 A-D-A. Um, so it's a one instead of the L and that's my username for both Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Hey, we hope to see you uh, in the future and we'll keep on watching your TikTok videos. Thanks for the time. Thank you so much.